Hi, welcome to the part 13 of this video series on real certification questions. Please focus on the concepts. Please subscribe to this channel for more such informative contents. For previous questions, please refer parts 1 to 12 of this video series. See, this is a very simple question. What it says is it wants a unique advantage that enterprise support customers receive. See, one thing I must tell clients usually buy this plan. So, this screen there are four plans. So, if you see here, enterprise has support cloud support engineers but even other plans like business has cloud support engineers and developer has cloud support associates so our answer cannot be cloud support engineer because that is not unique to enterprise support customers let me show you a very beautiful thing here. You see this technical account management, both for enterprise and enterprise on ramp, you have a pool of technical account managers. So your answer has to be this one. Now project manager, this one, and architect, it is your responsibility as a client to arrange that. AWS will not give you these roles like project manager and architect. So this is the final answer. Let's look at this one. Very cloud basic question. That is what is the advantage of cloud elasticity. Now, when I speak to people who are new or trying to move to the cloud world, they sometimes are not able to explain the advantage of elasticity. So let us scan through the options. A, A is not elasticity a is global when you spread your web traffic across regions it's global let's look at b by the way you do multiple aws regions for disaster recovery you do not do it for elasticity b says minimize storage costs elasticity has nothing to do with storage costs and archiving log data this is s3 archive or glacier okay this is not elasticity as this is wrong now c says you are allowing aws to automatically select the cost effective service that means it can automatically decide whether it needs to use redshift or rds or aurora crap it will not do that aws cannot do that azure cannot do that none of the cloud environments are designed so that they can pick the services automatically so that leaves us just with option D, which should be the answer because whenever we talk about elasticity, always think compute capacity. And what it is doing is it will automatically adjust. By the word adjust, it means it can scale up, it can scale down. When do you scale up? When you need more resources for example amazon.com if there the system is designed for 100,000 users and suddenly 1 million comes up 
it scales up the compute. Okay? During Christmas time it can happen. But if it is post Christmas, the number of users goes down to 50,000 at certain point in time, it will scale down. That is called automatic adjustment. And why it does it? To maintain a consistent performance. So this one is a beautiful document on elasticity. You can pause this video to read this. It also explains the same concept of acquiring resources as you need them and releasing resources when you don't need them. Let's look at the next one. What are the capabilities of cost management tools? We need to select two answers. Option A suggests that if the budget threshold exceeds, it will automatically terminate the resources. This never happens in the cloud world. Because why it doesn't happen? Because we always believe in democracy. What does democracy say? It says if there is an illegal occupation of a land, of a government property, still you will, the government have to issue a court notice to vacate that illegal occupation. They cannot just go about running the bulldozers. That is democracy. For some people, it seems logical. For some people, it may be illogical. But forget about logic. If you think from a humanity standpoint, you should do the best which is good from a humanity standpoint. And that is what AWS does. If your budget exceeds, it will not automatically terminate the resources. It will give you alerts. It will give you enough time to, you know, do your thing. B says, cost management tools will break down your AWS costs by day, service, and linked accounts, which is perfect. That is why cost management tools are made for. Now, C says it will, you can create your own budgets, for example, say $5,000 a month of usage. You will receive notifications when your forecasted usage exceeds the budget. This is perfect. This is what cost management does. It is proactive. That means the government, instead of crying that someone did an illegal occupation, they should be proactive when that illegal occupation was happening. They should come and avoid that scenario. D says you switch. Cost management tools will allow you to switch the instances. This is wrong. This switching of instances, you have to do it. Cost management tools will not do it for you. So, D is wrong, A is wrong, and E says move data stored in S3 to more cost effective storage class. This is wrong. This is not a function of cost management tool. E can be achieved by S3 intelligent tiring and not by cost management tool. So these are my two answers. This question talks about total cost of ownership. See, whenever we are solutioning or creating a solution for a client, so we try to calculate what will be the total cost of ownership for whatever services we are using. So which cost component should be addressed when developing this. So you should always address your compute costs. First, facilities cost you cannot address because this is something which is in total purview of AWS. 
storage cost you should address because this is your BB and data transfer cost is your BB. You will understand that where should you position the servers if you use hybrid or if you use multi-cloud there will be network cost for data in data out whatever data in is free data out is not free so in hybrid if the data goes out it is not free in multi-cloud if the data goes out of aws to azure or to gcp it is not free network infrastructure cost this is not your baby this is something aws takes care and hardware life cycle cost for example a certain hardware expires or become degrades after three years the replacement of that hardware is aws responsibility so these are my final answers let's look at the last portion of this video so you have an ec2 instance and you have uh, s3 bucket okay so how you should give access to ec2 instance to s3 bucket based on security best practices everything you have to do is on best practice basis the first one says that hard code secret key this is wrong best practice never suggests hard code okay second one says store secret key in text file crap it is not secured third one looks correct where it says ec2 instance will assume a role to obtain privileges to upload the file here this looks correct fourth is wrong because it is saying you tell s3 bucket that any service can upload no you only have to provide access to ec2 service this is the final answer please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button this brings us to the end of part 13 see you in the next part